Hi, um, I'm Murray Hopkinson and I'm a Chinese medicine practitioner. Today I'm going to show you some acupressure points you can use for anxiety, um, depression, insomnia, um, things like stress, insomnia, that's poor sleep, um, difficulty um, falling asleep or waking up at night, um, things like uh, anxiety, depression, those kinds of things. Now. Um, these are acupressure, so that means pressing the points yourself. This is not going to a practitioner and being treated by one. Um, someone like me would give you a proper diagnosis and then be able to inform you as to how Chinese medicine can help to treat those the things that are bothering you, um, whether we can at all. Um, I'm, I'll talk a little bit at the end of this video because that could be a little bit boring for you, but about the recent guideline changes in Australia that have happened um, and what we can say about things that we can and can't treat and how that affects our, our clinical practice um, and how it affects the advertising that we can do. But in for this purpose of this video, this is just an informational video. I'm just giving you some free information um, about what you can do for yourself. So this isn't what a practitioner can do and this is what you can do for yourself based on the ancient wisdom of Chinese medicine. So you can see here that I'm holding my little acupuncture man. Um, he's been through the wars a little bit with all of his um, little needles in him. I've um, taken a lot of those those ones out but um, yeah aside from being stabbed in the neck maybe he feels a little bit stressed and anxious so I'm going to show you how you can find some points on yourself especially these ones around your wrist are really good um, to try for um, anxiety and stress and um, helping you sleep so I'm just going to put him down for a little bit there um, so the first thing to think of is um, with acupressure sometimes it doesn't work very well because you press the points incorrectly that's the, the, the biggest problem so um, sometimes you don't press the points for long enough maybe or you didn't press the points um, in the right place or the right angle of the pressure that can be the problem so often when you see um, uh, like let's say diagrams um, which I'll put one up on the um, on the screen here after um, it's a it's a one-dimensional diagram it's just like a picture and it's something pointing there so you don't know necessarily how deep to you don't know how deep you need to press those points or how for how long you need to press them and look to be honest no one really knows that's up to you to work that out and uh, that you get to know that by trial and error what works for you so I'm going to give you some general tips about acupressure and I've got lots of other videos about acupressure that you can watch which will give you even more information about what you can how, what you can do so the first thing to do is to um, find out well what are the points that are the, the common ones to use now there's lots of different points that can work and and really what works the best is depending on your diagnosis so the diagnosis isn't like oh you've got insomnia or like you can't sleep or you've got um anxiety or you feel heart palpitations is this point for this or point for that there are some things like that that are indication uses but in acupuncture the the practitioner will give you a pr proper diagnosis and that's really based on your pulse diagnosis so they'll have to check that to know what the imbalance is in your body so aside from that there are some points that just generally have like overall functional abilities like that that could help with with those particular things so what i'll do is i'll just show you on my own hands where these points are I'll take those off. so um the first one is really to think about your wrist now um this area is um like any kind of stress you could use for the, these points and the thing with acupressure to remember on yourself is you really can't do it wrong like you press you're not going to like cause a, a big imbalance in your body or something crazy so the best thing to do is just to give it a go and give it a try and see what works um, you won't know until you try it so pretty much you've got um, your heart and your pericardium channel and your lung channel on this um, medial side of your hand so um, the first one that you can try is um, the pericardium channel that goes through the middle here a lot of people know pericardium 6, this point here, which is used for um, nausea, like pain, uh, like let's say you get car sick or something like that, you go on a boat. Um, I've got a video about that one, so I won't go on about that point too much because it's like that's really, you can watch that particular video, that's just how to stop nausea with acupressure. Um, but what I will say in this video is you can use different things that you might find around. So these 
just like it's not the best example, but this wax. This is just a wax stick. So something blunt that you can press in there with. Um, you could use that. So that might work for you to kind of press on those spots there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you this head here. Um, and just try this pen so you can see the actual points on here um, now so the thing with your wrist is what's cool about it is it's got these little creases here so that usually makes it easy and most people have one crease so just hold that up so you can probably see it um, so what I'll do is I'll just draw where the main points are one now so that's the pericardium seven point and the pericardium channel just goes down the middle there and then you've got your heart channel and your lung channel. So heart channels on this side and lung channels on that side. So the heart in Chinese medicine is about like mental health, like anything mental would belong to the heart. And the pericardium is like the sac around the heart. So um, when I did shiatsu, they used to call that the heart protector or something like that. So it's like the, um, it mirrors the functions of the heart. Um, so you can use the pericardium channel for things that you would use the heart channel for. And like in classical acupuncture, for instance, they don't needle the heart channel because they think that's your emperor. Um, don't needle that directly. So the way to access the heart channel would be to go through the pericardium channel. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. So you could try this first. So the, the point I first mentioned was pericardium six. And that's two... So now just watch that other video to find out what that is. So just the two fingers sort of slightly spaced apart between those two tendons. But we're going to talk about pericardium seven. And then we're going to talk about these other two points sort of here on your hands, which I find these to be quite useful points as well. So pericardium and the heart, these are both eight. They, all the points in Chinese medicine have numbers and they have names. Um, the numbers are nice to remember like I guess for Westerners it helps you because sometimes it's hard to say the names of the points like um, Nei Guan or something, Pericardium 6 might be hard to remember that name. Um, for this video you don't need to care about the names, just <laughs> press the points. Um, so what I'm getting at is if you know the general area, you could just press that general area and it's, it's it, you, what, one way of doing it would be just to find the points that feel sore, the sorest spots in there and often they're in between two tendons. Um, so this point here, like let's say you're nervous and you're going for a job interview or um, you know, you're feeling really anxious and um, it's an easy place to press because it's not really obvious. You can't, it's going to look weird if you sit there tapping your head or do something like while you're waiting outside the job interview room. So these points are nice and convenient. You don't have to sort of bend around your back or do anything crazy like that. So um, what you want to do is press this one here on your hand um, and press this point here on, or down here so pericardium six and pericardium seven um, and then the eight one is good so what you do with that is you just massage your hand I'll try to show you between the, the, these two big muscly sort of tendons that you feel here and basically you just kind of press press pressing in there until you find now again I love the back of the pen situation it's really good you can just press right in there and just get right in until one thing with acupressure is you should feel a feeling from it so you should feel achy tingly heavy numbness dull ache um, something going up or down your hand that's all good that means it's working um, the tendency when you've got a problem and you use acupressure for it could be that you press 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 the points too much and that will make you get sore like your hand will get sore or your muscles get sore so you could either swap to the other side or swap to a different point. Maybe just don't press it so hard. It doesn't have to be bruising it or pressing it so hard to get an effect. So pretty much after you've pressed any of those points, you're going to feel tingly or heavy um, and hopefully a bit more relaxed. And then when you come back to press it, you press it again, it, it'll already be like desensitized. So you should already feel that feeling. So 
that's your pericardium channel kind of going up here so it goes up here it goes down the middle of your um, middle of your um, medial aspect of your forearm and then down there we don't need to worry about the points down here so um, you could sometimes use maybe a point along here you could just um, press 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 palpate down those areas until you find something that sort of sticks out to you like that's a bit sore there for me right in that spot and that follows along the uh, the method of acupressure that's known as like the dr. tan or the balance method there's other names for it as well um, but basically you might have a point that's sore on here because you've got pain in your back or you've got pain in your neck or something like that so sometimes you can be helping those things as well by finding the most sore point on that channel so I'll put the names of the channel in the description for this video and also I'll put some some pictures in this video too so you can see that um, now if you're a follower of my channel you know I normally don't speak like this softly and I'm more much more bombastic I'm just giving it a try not being so bombastic um, because usually I'm sort of yelling into the microphone nearly and this is a video for people who have stress and anxiety so I thought that this would help using this voice um, yeah so let me know if that works for you um, I may also just remake this video with my normal bombastic voice as well um, and I'm also testing my new microphone out which is pretty cool Let's see how that works so yeah that is the pericardium channel now the heart channel um, let's see a different color pen here should have done that one red already. Yeah, the heart red. So the heart channel comes down here, and this is a really good, interesting point. Now there's two spots you can press it on. One is like, well, you could say the points there, but you can also like when we needle this point, we either needle it from this spot or needle it from the side. Uh, I'll just show you with this one because this is a cool little. These, these, these are just like funky little uh, Barbie doll needles really like they've got, they've got um, they're not Barbie doll needles but they, I just call them Barbie doll needles because they've, they've got like plastic ends that are fluorescent different weird colors so you, I'm not going to needle that spot there because I've already just put a pen on it but if we just put it at the side here so there's a tendon that basically just runs down that way and oh shit that didn't work out the Chinese would say or some of my Chinese teachers used to say can be happen um, so we'll just do it from the side there and like obviously I don't so yeah don't normally needle this way um, like in the air I mean like the patients usually lying down so the tendons running it down here and you and you just basically when we needle it we're threading the needle underneath that tendon so I don't know if you can kind of see that And so what will happen is um, okay so you can see that photo there that I've put in um, so that point yeah what I'm getting at is I'm just gonna take him out because I don't need him anymore uh, yeah you can press that point there or you can press it from the side so if I don't have any dots on my hand you, you just feel the, the tendon that's there and you can either press it here the, the feeling should go to your little finger or here like down here when you're getting it right so that's your heart point and then also coming up to the heart here now that's exactly the same as that pericardium 8 the heart 8 in terms of how you find it like it's exactly the same sort of feeling you'll just feel it's, you've got to press in pretty deep normally so sometimes with acupuncture we use these tubes that are like you know and what we'll do is I'll normally press the tube in really hard before I needle that point because it's usually it can be sore can be painful it's a sore area so when you're pressing it it should feel sore it should feel nice and sore um, and that tingly is the main thing like it's like your, your, your fingers feel tingly almost like a pins and needles but not like a not like a horrible pins and needles not like your legs going to sleep the needles um, yeah so those are the main points now in terms of what they do 
the pericardium six is good if you have nausea feel anxious and feel it affects your stomach so like uh, sometimes we call that like liver invading the spleen like the the uh the wood of your body is is overpowering the earth annoying the earth element and the earth element relates to your digestion and then um it's also it, it fires up onto the heart and on, like that's that's the, the pericardium belongs to the heart um so pericardium channel relates to blood in chinese medicine this relates to the uterus blood so if you're a female um you know if you're a man you sorry you don't have any uterus blood but um yeah if you're a female and you have like menstrual problems then pericardium channel is often used for for those things too um, not just these points but it could be any points along there and so that, that would be the most obvious ones i would tell you if you have stress anxiety especially if you have a lot of hotness associated with that like you feel um flustered hot we would call that like yang floating upwardly um and like these points like sort of draw that heat away from the, that part of your body and help to send it back down um, so if you feel hot and flustered at night particularly that means that you um well you're having too much yang at a time when it should be a time of yin to keep it really simple so um yeah you shouldn't be getting hot and sweaty at night like um or a lot of dreams a lot of vivid dreams the more vivid the dreams the more involved the dreams then the, the more upwardly you want to use those points probably so um pericardium seven is def and 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 eight takes more heat away from like uh, well it doesn't take the heat away it pushes the heat back down really to where it's supposed to be so the um those, those sort of points so if you have the the nausea sort of thing then this one the other channel that you can use on your hand is the lung channel this is also a yin yin channel so as opposed to a yang channel uh is this that one let's see hmm, do i have any other colors pens i think i'll have a silver pen that one too, so. Lung channel goes. This is a really cool area. I'm just going to draw it on my hand. Actually, this one. Oops. So I failed that. Um, really goes like this around there. Forget about this one. So that little bit of the drawing that I've drawn is the drawn, drawn, <laughs> back in time to when I was a baby, um, is the lung channel. So let's all draw it now. Um, this part of your hands, that's called the thena eminence. This um, part, it's the it's the height of that that um, muscle that you kind of feel a, a tightness in the middle of that, and that is lung ten, the new G. So you want to just sort of press that point with, again, I love the back of the pen because it's, pens are really easy to find. Um, this is a cool little fountain pen, but um, this but um, this got a real pointy end on it, so that's really good. So you can kind of poke and point in with that. So that's lung ten. Lung nine is again sort of similar to um, heart seven, and lung nine is kind. Of, it's the first point of your pulse. Um, point so when you feel your pulse in Chinese medicine that is that first spot where you feel that pulsing artery that is long line and yeah so that's a good point now what why I'm mentioning those is because if let's say you don't have the things drawn on you and you're like oh a few weeks later you get anxiety or stressed and you think oh Marie told me those points what do I use um, how do I find them you don't worry just remember the crease of your wrist and anywhere along here you can press so it's going to be your lung channel here and if you forget you, you can't make yourself worse by pressing these points like um you know if anything you're going to get a psychological effect thinking that it's going to work and then by pressing them in that's often how eft works i don't know if you've ever done that i've, I've not really done that but i get the gist of it so if you think something's going to work it often will work and um so anyway if you press these points here on your hand so just along the crease so you could you can rub along the crease 
Now something people do use often are essential oils. So you can see I've got a whole bunch of essential oils behind me. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really planning on talking about essential oils today, but since we're talking about stress, we could do that. Um, Lavender is a good one. That's what I'm looking for, but I don't think I can see lavender here. Um. Okay, so I found some lavender oil. <clears throat> and what you can do with this is obviously check if you're allergic to essential oils. I'm not advocating you use this if you don't know if it works for you or whatever. Um, and just read the instructions on your bottle that you buy but usually with lavender it's okay to use it neat which means you don't dilute it in any way there are some essential oils or if you're not sure about your sensitivity you can dilute them now because they're an oil it's better to dilute it in oil or in cream so there's a couple of options you can do um, uh, this is what it looks like in Australia That's where I come from. Um, this is aqueous cream which means it's like a cream that's water soluble people use this when they've got similar to sorbolene cream um, but this is actually really useful for making your own creams you can pretty much anything's going to dissolve in this cream so you can just oh here we go i'm going to have a big mess now because all the dots on me but you would just use a little bit of that give you a little bit of cream uh, like you, now you've diluted it um, that's one way to do it or put it into a little jar so now I've got some lavender cream and what I'm going to do with lavender cream is just rub it across my wrist because I maybe you don't remember where the points are so you could just do that before you go to bed at night that's one that's one spot that's a great spot to use so I would just rub it gently and then maybe rub it a little bit more deeply research shows that people who smell lavender get sleepy and they've done tests with people uh, in doing puzzles in different rooms and giving them lavender cinnamon and nothing so actually you're less likely to fill out the puzzle properly or do well on the puzzle if you smell lavender so if you're trying to study and you're stressed don't use lavender um, if you want to sleep and you're stressed yes you can use lavender but um, I really don't want to rub lavender on me because I'm not wanting to sleep right now so I'm just going to wipe this off and different smells make people um, calm for different reasons too like um, you know you may have a trigger smell that like reminds you of when you were a kid your grandma's perfume something like that and lavender is something that a lot of old people did use a lot I don't know whether they just didn't have any other scents or everyone loved lavender I mean my mum just pretty much always wanted lavender soap for for um yeah for mother's day she always just wants us to buy a lavender soap so yeah lavender can remind you of your grandparents or your parents or something like that that might be a happy memory um so that may help too um so you can use essential oils on the points now if you use it neat you just drop a few drops on there another spot that you can rub lavender on another acupressure point we'll just quickly talk about is on your head so yeah, at the side of your temples, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna draw my face. Um, you've got your bone here. This, if you just go a little bit back from here, um, you'll feel a little depression in that spot. So that spot there, right, basically right in the center of that depression is an acupressure point. And there's a point like right on the bone as well, just that's a called bladder one point. Be careful about rubbing anything near your eyes that you're not sure about, like lavender, I'd be, I, I would put it here, but I wouldn't go anywhere else near my eyes. The other points on the back of your neck, you can use those with lavender, and we can talk about those other ones later. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something you can try. Um, so going back to the hand, we've just done the pericardium channel, we've done the um, the heart channel, and we've also got this lung channel here too. So on your lung channel, we've done lung lung nine which that's the point for your pulse when you do when Chinese medicine practitioners check your pulse 
that long line is like the first point so if you're not sure if you're on the point you could just very don't press too hard because you'll probably press the pulse through like just press the you might press the artery all the way down but you could just touch on that spot so if you put three fingers there that's how we would check our own pulse like in this way um then that that place where you first it's really hard to show you on this video but I'm going to turn around like that for you to see that spot where that first finger rests is the long nine like the point there and then the long channel goes on to the hand now this point here can be a useful point too it's a little bit more tricky to find it's just at the um, so this bony part that sticks out of, of here is called your styloid process um, so this is um, your radius bone and you'll find like a, like a sharp edge of that that's the styloid process actually to find this point you can do this so you go like this on yourself and where that finger ends is right where that point is so I've even <laughs> I've failed it again where I've exactly drawn it it's hard when your hands are kind of moving so it's kind of here So yeah, we've talked about the lung channel just being there. So that at that point is like this, and it's right at that end of that styloid process. You're gonna feel like a little depression sort of created in that spot there. And um, that point's really good for your neck actually. So if you get stiffness in your neck, tightness in your neck, it's often used like that. So thinking about those three channels and stress, anxiety, and why you would use different ones, um, the, the heart and pericardium sort of similarly. Like one way of thinking, like in Chinese medicine, any mental health problem, the, the fault is the heart. So the heart houses the mind, houses the shen, and that that shen is your consciousness. So, um, so your heart houses the shen, and the fact that you can feel pain um, is part of the Shen's function. The fact that you can feel emotions is part of the Shen's function. Um, so when those those feelings go out of balance, so if you, even if you feel emotional pain um, or physical pain, then it's a Shen issue. And so one way to treat that or to access that area of your body is through that Shen, through the mind, through the heart, and through the pericardium. So um, you can't really go wrong if you have stress pressing these points. Um, if the stress affects your lungs, like your organ of your lungs, so you might get shortness of breath. And there could be other reasons for this. So quite often your diaphragm gets really tight and that presses up and you get like a choking or a, a constricted feeling in your chest. Um, even the chest itself getting tight, then maybe try this lung seven point as well as these other ones um, and see what, which ones help you the most in that way. Um, Obviously doing deep breathing in those situations is good, but I'm assuming that you already know how to do that. Um, and relaxing the diaphragm um, and breathing in your, into your belly like a baby breathes, breathes is good to do. And yeah, so that hopefully will help you learn some of these points for acupressure. And um, yeah, if you're interested in more stuff, you can watch my channel and uh, let me know in the comments if this video is helpful for you. Um, do you like this style of talking? Would you prefer me to just be my normal bombastic self? Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this microphone. It seems to be picking up all the sound quite well. And um, yeah, hopefully have a great day and feel, feel better soon. Thanks. So I just need to give you also a little disclaimer or some information um, that's important to know. This is not a replacement for a, a medical consultation. Um, this video is intended to help you to learn stuff that you can use yourself but if you, if you really have um, symptoms that are bothering you you should go to your doctor or your healthcare practitioner um, obviously i would advocate acupuncture and chinese medicine um, but wh whatever um, floats your boat and um, 
it's it's really important that you don't leave those symptoms un, unattended or if you've got undiagnosed symptoms especially in the chest like you've got chest pain or things like that and you haven't had a diagnosis of what it is you don't know if it's anxiety you're just thinking it is it could be a heart problem so it's better to go and have that stuff checked and um yeah i want to make sure that um yeah people don't think they take, take these points say oh marie said press this point and um, i didn't go and get properly checked out so that that's that's important but really why i make these videos is because um like a lot of my patients have um problems where they've been to a doctor um they've had a diagnosis of sorts and like they were left with these symptoms to to just basically manage there's nothing that western medicine can find wrong with you um so if that's you then hopefully this video is the videos i make will be helpful for you and um yeah i guess with acupuncture um like there's lots of things where we would uh, see a connection between problems in the body where western medicine doesn't see that connection